Hello everyone, I'm Rabbi Chaitovsky. Welcome to another video dvar from my office here at BMHBJ in Denver. A very uh, special uh, Shabbat this week on our Jewish calendar. It is not only a regular Shabbat, it's also Shabbat Shkalim, um, the Shabbat of the Shekel. And this refers to the uh, contribution made um, for the census and the contribution made towards materials uh, for the Mishkan. Uh, we've been reading about the Mishkan and we're already thinking about Passover, uh, which is a little bit, you know, almost two months away now. Um, and Shabbat Shkalim is the first of four special Shabbatot uh, that lead us uh, to the festival of Pesach. Um, we'll have plenty of time to think about and talk about Pesach uh, but I did want to talk to you about this week's Torah portion, Vayakhel. Uh, Vayakhel details the actual construction of the Mishkan. Uh, we were interrupted. The instructions to build the Mishkan, which were transmitted to Moshe, and then the instructions that Moshe told the people, then were interrupted by the episode of the Golden Calf, and we read about that last week. And Moses had Moshe had secured... God's forgiveness for the Jewish people. He took a new set of luchot, a new set of tablets, upon which God would inscribe the next version or the other iteration of the Aseret Hadibrot, the Ten Statements, and those were going to be brought to the Jewish people. And last week's Torah portion ends with Moshe coming off the mountain, holding the luchot, and it says, uh, Kikaran or Moshe, that, that the people uh, saw that Moses' face was, was radiant and um, it, it shone with uh, the, glory, uh, of the glory of God. Uh, and it was a reminder that Moshe had a very close encounter uh, with God that worked out in our favor because he secured God's forgiveness uh, for the sin of the golden calf. And no sooner does he come off the mountain and the Jewish people spring into action and they bring whatever materials are necessary. They gather everything necessary for the building of the Mishkan. And um, they employ B'Tzalel and Ohaliyav uh, to be the foreman and the chief artists in residence uh, for the Mishkan. And things just move along swimmingly until the end of the Book of Shemot, uh, where the Mishkan is built. It's going to be dedicated. An accounting, is, uh, an accounting takes place, and it's easy to overlook, although well, not really, but at the very beginning of the Torah portion, Moshe reminds them of Shabbat. He begins this great speech. Um, it says, Vayakel Moshe kol adat b'nei Yisrael v'yomer alihem. Um, uh, Moshe gathers everyone together, and I'm sure the people are going to be gathered together because they think that they're going to they're going to hear something really great and it's going to be the next stage in their development and Moshe says sheshet yamim te'asem alacha you're going to work for 6 days uvayom ashvi'i yihiya lachem kodesh shabbat shabbaton lashem you're going to keep shabbat he reminds them about shabbat right before they start building the mishkan and everyone wants to know why does Moshe remind the Jewish people about Shabbat specifically at this moment? And there's all sorts of reasons uh, that are given. Uh, I want to just share a, a, a personal uh, reflection, and maybe it helps us understand the flow. Because I say we're interrupted by the episode of the Golden Calf. The episode of the Golden Calf represented a colossal misstep of the Jewish people. They violated a what we consider to be a fundamental idea and aspect of Jewish tradition, which is that God alone is to be worshipped. And anything that gets in the way of that, anything that can be idolatrous, is out of the pale. Fundamental principle. Then we read in this week's Torah portion about the building of the Mishkan, and we're reading about it almost as if nothing had happened. The Torah portion makes no reference at all to the sin of the golden calf. And Moshe worked so hard. It's as if the event happened, 
and then people pick up the pieces and just move on, never talking about it, never referencing it. It just seems very strange. I can't imagine that the Jewish people were not thinking about it the entire time in the aftermath of, of, of what happened. And I think that's what the reminder of Shabbat is really about. Shabbat is another fundamental aspect of Jewish tradition. And Moshe very brilliantly says, I'm not going to talk to them about idolatry. I'm not going to talk to them about the mistake they just made. I'm just going to use another example of a fundamental that they, in their mistaken, uh, their potentially mistaken idea about where holiness is and what's really important, might overlook. They may say, we're going to build the Mishkan. The Mishkan is the source of, of our holiness. And it's where we're going to go to encounter holiness. And that would be even more important than any other fundamental idea. It will be the most fundamental idea. And Moses says, no. There is something more fundamental, and that is Shabbat. Shabbat is the reminder of where holiness really comes from. It comes from God. It cannot be divorced from God. It is not in the synagogue because it's just a building. It's a building that is special. Shabbat is very special. And we can never overlook it even in our desire to create what we would all believe to be like God's home. The fact is, by Moshe reminding the Jewish people about Shabbat, he's reminding them, don't make the mistake you made before. Don't cast away a fundamental idea and fundamental principle of Judaism. Even in the sacred task of building synagogues and building community, Shabbat is the cardinal idea or one of the cardinal ideas that must be remembered and cannot be overlooked. You can hear more about this if you join us in Shul, the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.